Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on managing projects with multiple video formats. One of the questions I get the most is they've got HD and SD, they've got still images, and they've got video images, and they've got a whole different bunch of different flavors of HD. How do you work with them all inside the same project? When do you transcode? When do you change render settings? And if you are going to transcode, how do you transcode? And how do you take advantage of all the settings inside Compressor, the questions are almost endless. And that's what we want to cover today, is to help you get control of all the different video formats that are out there. When to use the power of Final Cut, when to use the power of Compressor, and how to use the power that's in Compressor is what we want to focus on today. Often, it isn't a single tool, but the integration of multiple tools that's needed to solve a problem. Today, I want to talk about managing multiple video format projects and how we can use advanced controls and compressor to simplify our editing. Over the course of this presentation, I'll define some common terms, determine the video format of a clip, decide which video format that we should edit, decide when to change Final Cut's render settings or whether we should transcode the video entirely, how to change the render settings inside Final Cut Pro. Deciding which codec to use for a project, choose when to use ProRes and which version of ProRes to use. Then in Compressor, I want to take a look at the history, the preview, and the batch windows, and a detailed look at frame controls. Finally, we'll wrap up on a discussion of when to deinterlace a clip and how to deinterlace a clip. Before we move into the more advanced topics, I want to make sure we have our basic terms understood. So I want to do some definitions of codec, native, transcode, interlace, progressive, and deinterlace. A codec is an abbreviation of compressor and decompressor. It's a mathematical process, a computer program that's used to convert the video and audio that we see and that we hear into a file that the computer can store. Our senses perceive analog data. The computer stores digital data. A codec converts from analog to digital and from various digital formats to other digital formats and different codecs are designed to meet different goals. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. When we talk about a native codec or editing natively, native means that we are working with the codec that was used by the camera to record your images. In standard def, it's better to edit the native codec than to transcode it. In high def, it isn't that simple. When you hear the word transcode, think convert. Life would be a lot easier if they just called it conversion, but they have to call it transcoding, which drives all of us nuts. Transcode means to convert a digital media file from one codec or format to another. For example, you transcode from HD to SD, or you transcode from HDV to ProRes. Compressor is better than Final Cut Pro for transcoding, and I'll show you how soon. All digital video images are composed of rows and columns of pixels. An interlaced codec records and displays a full screen image in two parts called fields. One field is composed of all the odd numbered rows and the other field is composed of all the even rows except they're offset by a slight difference in time, a sixtieth of a second or a fiftieth of a second. Those two rows, when they are woven together, create an interlaced image. Standard definition displays the even or bottom field first, and high definition generally displays the odd or top field first. A progressive codec records and displays all the rows and columns of pixels at one time. Progressive is better for computer displays, while interlaced is used in traditional standard definition media and for most traditional TV sets. If you have a choice, progressive is better than interlaced, especially for action. If you have a choice, a smaller progressive image is better than a bigger interlaced image. There's a greater degree of clarity, of focus, of perceived resolution in a 720p picture than in a 1080i picture. Deinterlacing is the process of converting an interlaced image to a progressive image. The problem is, is that deinterlacing tends to make an image appear softer unless you are also reducing the size of an image. And if you are reducing the size of your image, say you're compressing it for the web, and you reduce it to 50% of its original size or smaller, deinterlacing is automatic and does not necessarily impact image quality. Well, now that we've got some basic definitions down, let's shift gears and figure out how we can determine the format of a clip. 
Well, there's a variety of ways, but two of the easiest are first to either open the file in QuickTime and type Command I, and the codec information is displayed in the heads up display called the HUD. Or you can select the clip in Final Cut Pro and type Command 9, and the codec is displayed in the Edit Properties window. Let me show you both. This is an HD clip. I'll double click it, load it up into QuickTime Player. This, by the way, is QuickTime 10. We go up to Window, go down to Show Movie Inspector, keyboard shortcut is Command I, and it pops up a floating HUD. And notice that it says the format is Apple ProRes 422, the image size is 1920 1080, and it's using millions of colors. It also gives us the frame rate and the audio information. Command I toggles this window on and off. We could also take a, a standard definition clip. I'm going to open this with QuickTime 7. And when it's in QuickTime 7, we go to Window, Show Movie Inspector, again, Command I. It pops up a HUD. And when we look at the HUD, it says it's a DV image, 720 by 480. The parenthetical comment indicates that the 720 480 are not square pixels. If you convert these to square pixels, it becomes a 640 480 image. Again, millions of colors. This is the frames per second, but it also gives us things like data size and data rate, which are useful when we're dealing with trying to figure out how a file was compressed. Whether you're working with QuickTime 7 or whether you're working with QuickTime 10, you get there the same way. Command-I toggles that HUD on or off.